OK, so we need to solve for the values of x that are going to make this equation true. And you might be saying, oh, man, I don't want to multiply this. Well, you can go ahead and multiply it. Um, but that's not really going to help you get towards um, more of your answer, what we're going to look to. Because what we're at is we're at a very important point as far as when solving equations. Now, we worked on solving equations by using inverse operations, right? And that's very straightforward. You just undo what's happening um, to your trigonometric expression, and then you get it solved. But what happened when we, you know, when we dealt with quadratics? Right, let's say I'm just going to do something. Um, uh, let's do 5x um, plus 4. All right, remember when we got to quadratics or something like this, we couldn't just simply just subtract 4 and divide because there's two variables. So, what we did is we worked on factoring, right? And what we do is we factored. And the reason why factoring was so important is because what it allowed us to do is represent or present the zero product property. And the zero product property states that any two numbers, when equal to 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0. So that was very important because then what we did is we took these two and we said, all right, well, that means x equals 4, or x plus 4 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 4 and x e or x equals negative 1. And that's how we were able to find our solutions by using the zero product property. So what I notice here, when looking up to this problem, I notice I have a binomial times another binomial equals 0. That means this has to equal 0 or this has to equal for our equation to be true. So what I'm going to do is kind of similar to what I did with um, quadratics, is I'm going to set these both equal to 0. So I'm going to have 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0 and tangent squared of x minus 3 equals 0. So now what I'm going to do is just solve for each one of these. Because you can see now, oh, I can isolate my terms. So the first thing I do is add 1 to both sides. So I get 3 tangent squared of x equals 1 divided by 3. Tangent squared of x equals 1 third. Now take the root. So therefore, tangent of x, remember, equals plus or minus. Whenever you introduce the square root, you got to make sure you introduce plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. Now we can simplify that, finally, as into tan of x equals plus or minus. By rationalizing the denominator, I get square root of 3 over 3. And I'm going to use that value for us to kind of help us when we look at the unit circle. All right, for this problem, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get tangent squared of x equals positive 3. Take the root of both sides, and I get tangent of x equals plus or minus 3. So what we need to do is we need to find the values of x when we have plus or minus square root of 3 over 3 and plus or minus um, square root of 3. So what I'm going to do to find that is I need to go to my unit circle. And I kind of want to look at my angles on the unit circle for what tangent is going to work with. So remember, in looking at the first quadrant, there was three important points that we dealt with. And we need to also remember the angles for these points. OK, so the first angle would be pi 6, pi over 6. The second angle was pi 4. And the third angle was pi over 3. So let's determine on for each angle, what is my tan value? So at tan of my first angle, which is pi over 6, we're going to have um, 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Well, by multiplying by the reciprocal and getting this off the bottom, what I'm left with is 1 over radical 3, which equals radical 3 over 3. Let's look at tan of pi over 4. That's going to equal square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2, which equals 1. And then I'm going to look at tan of pi over 3, which equals square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is just going to represent radical 3. So what I notice is the tangent of pi over 6 equals square root of 3 over 3, which is exactly right here. Um, however, I also need to represent the negative value. So what we're going to do is, if I was going to look at negative, well, if I could reflect this over my y-axis, I know that this point is also going to be negative. So we need to look at you know, when would my value be positive and negative. Well, if this is pi over 6, then this angle, if halfway around the circle is pi, or 6 pi over 6, then we could say this angle is going to be 5 pi over 6. So right now, I'm going to have talk with two solutions right now. I have x equals pi over 6 and x equals 5 pi over 6. Now let's look at the next case solution. So at pi over 3, I have positive pi thirds, 
which is right here. The negative value would be, again, reflecting it over the y-axis, which would be 2 pi over 3. So now I have two solutions for here, which is x equals pi thirds and x equals 2 pi over 3. However, ladies and gentlemen, we got to remember these are not all of our solutions because tangent is positive at this value, but it's also positive at this value because on, when you reflect across the y and the x, now you have a negative x and a negative y. When you divide them, you're still going to have a positive tangent value. So the distance from here to here, all I really need to do, if I have my angle, to get to this angle, what I need to do is add pi, right? Because the period, um, that's going to be working with the period of tangent. So therefore, I could say plus pi. And what happened if I add pi again? Well, if I add pi to this angle again, I'm going to get back to now a new angle, which would be uh, 13 pi over 6. And then I can add pi again. And this, this continues over and over and over again. And no matter what the angle is, as long as they end on these two points, I'm still going to have a solution. So I need to represent infinite many kind of revolutions around the circle. So I'm going to have pi over 6 plus pi times r, where r is just going to represent the number of, time, or number of times however I'm going to um, move pi, uh, um, pi uh, distance around the circle. Then that's the same thing for 5 pi over 6. At 5 pi over 6, here's negative because the x value is negative. Well, if I add pi to that angle, now my y value is negative. So it's still going to produce a negative tangent of 1 over square root of, or square root of 3, or negative square root of 3 over 3. So therefore, again, I need to add pi r. Now for pi over 3, you notice that there's another angle here, which the distance, again, is adding pi. Add another pi. We can keep on repeating that. And here it's negative because the x is value. But if I go down here, now the x is positive, but the y is negative. So for each one of these, I'm going to keep on adding pi over r. So these all happens when we don't have a constraint on our solution. We're just asking for what are all the values that are going to make this equation true. So we apply the zero product property, and voila. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe. Love you. Thanks.